Hey everyone, hope you're all doing well. You may have noticed that it's been quite a while since I've made a video, about a month or so, um, and so I do apologize for that, but I have been very busy with trying to find a job and senior design. But I do have good news, and that is that I've officially been accepted into the YouTube Partnership Program. So thank you all of my viewers and subscribers. I really appreciate um, all that you guys have provided for me, and so I am now a partner. And so you can expect videos um, to come for quite a while now, so that's, that's the good news. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. The next video I'll be doing here is McPherson Strut, which is the next segment in this um, sort of suspension series. So McPherson Strut, uh, basic idea is you've got a single control arm, which is going to connect to the bottom of the wheel hub, and then you're going to have a shock spring combination, which connects to the top of the wheel hub. And so this shock spring or a strut is connected directly to the body at the top. So that's what, what kind of separates the McPherson strut apart from other suspension setups is that it's directly connected here at the top um, with this shock spring combo. And then you're going to have a steering link come in that connects also to this hub and it can connect right where the uh, shock and spring combo is coming in. So in, in an essence then you can think of the... Uh, the strut here as the also the steering axis for this tire. So that's the basic setup. You've got this bottom um, control arm which is connected to the car body or frame uh, and that's just one once again. Then you've got this open space in the center which is beneficial as I will point out. So the good of a McPherson strut, what's so great about this design? Um, well it's cheap, it's, it's fairly simple, and it's lighter than a double A-arm, so there's benefits there with weight savings and cost savings as well. Many uh, companies will go to the McPherson strut simply because it can get the job done for a cheaper price and the consumer won't notice the difference. Um, it's great for front wheel drive because of the space it allows. So as you can see here, there's nothing in this center area, so you can easily put in a drive, uh, drive shaft here and have a CV joint that goes right to this tire and rotates this wheel. So it's great for front wheel drive in that sense because it accommodates the space. If you had a double control arm, then you'd have two here, two control arms here, and then you might have a spring or a shock in between these two, and that would eliminate that space for putting in a drive shaft, which you can change, but it's a little more complicated. So the McPherson strut's an easy way of doing it. Um, another uh, benefit of a McPherson strut is it's narrower than a double A arm or double control arm or double wishbone, whatever you'd like to call it. So the space uh, from the tire to the car itself is, is minimized. So you can really, you can really locate this in, in smaller areas than you can with these two control arms. You've got one long one at the bottom and a shorter one at the top, and then you have this large space that you need um, in your vehicle for, to, to be able to do this. So that's one uh, negative side of the uh, double wishbone suspension. So what's the bad part of a McPherson strut? Well, it's taller than a double, can, double wishbone suspension. What I mean there is it takes up a lot of vertical space. So with two control arms, you don't have to have that vertical space requirement. So in some ways it can fit better, and in some ways it won't fit as well. So there's pros and cons to that side of it. Um, Small camber changes with body roll, and unlike a double control arm, you don't have camber gain. So in cornering, when you have a lot of body roll, this is a downside of the McPherson strut, whereas the uh, double wishbone suspension will maintain contact with the road better with heavy body roll. Uh, and this is because of the strut being mounted directly to the body, so you don't have that control arm where you can move the tire up and down as much, you only have the compression of the shock. And so one final thing is that this must mount to a body, so a unibody is basically necessary. You can't just have a frame and a body because the body won't be rigid enough to mount to. But most of the time this isn't a problem, especially since nowadays almost all vehicles are unibody design. So that's a basic overview of the McPherson strut, and my next video, which will be coming up in about a week, should be on uh, solid rear axles, solid axle type suspensions. So here we have the basic McPherson strut suspension setup. 
you can see the spring shock combination which is mounted to the body of the car and here at the top of the hub there is a steering uh, line that comes in here and here's the lower control arm down at the bottom and that's your basic McPherson strut setup